Hello, my name is Suresh. In this video, we will learn to install Quantum Espresso Vulnerable. Starting from installing using ABD repositories and building from the source, we will also cover adding pseudo potentials. And finally, we will try to run a smart program using pw.x to get you started. So, let's start. Open your terminal by simultaneously pressing Ctrl Alt T. First of all, let's check the system version using lsb release command. Here you can see that I am using an Ubuntu version of 22.04 code named Jami Jellyfish. Let's clear it. And now I am simply typing pw.x and you can see that we get an output as command not found. So, now let's install the quantum espresso using apt repository which is the simplest method and can be done with a single command. For that, simply type sudo apt install quantum dash espresso. Yes, now press Y. That's it. Quantum Espresso will be installed in your system automatically with all dependencies. Now again typing pw.x, you can see that the program runs. In this way, you can simply install Quantum Espresso using terminal. But when you look at the log of the installation file, you can see that the version of the Quantum Espresso is installed is 6.7. But the latest version of Quantum Espresso is 7.3.1. So to install the latest version, we have to approach it by compiling the source code. So let's move to the next section where we can compile the latest version of Quantum Espresso from the source and generate the required binary such as pw.x. For that, we have to install some prerequisites packages which are wget, gfortran, git, libffw3, liblapack, build essentials, and autocon. All the packages can be installed simultaneously in a single line using this command. As I have installed everything before, uh, it is showing the packages are in its newest versions. So we are good to go. The next step is to download the source code of Quantum Espresso from GitLab repository. For that, we can use wget. Copy and paste the link after wget. So it will download the file into current directory. Now it's downloading. In the meantime, I will show you how to download the source code from the GitLab using browser. For that, we have to open Firefox. Now, we can go to the GitLab repository where Quantum Espresso is hosted. Yeah, we have opened the Quantum Espresso GitLab repository. In the right side, you can see releases. Open that. Here, you can find all the source codes from the oldest version to the newest version. The newest version is 7.3.1 and you can find different formats of source codes here. We will download the source code tar.gz and let's wait for the download to finish. After completing the download, copy your uh, .rgz file to your current directory where you planning to install the condom espresso. Okay, the downloading is completed. Now, Let's check whether the file is present. Okay. Now we can unzip the file using tar zxv f. Now copy and paste the file name from above. Press enter. It will unzip into a folder with the same file name. Okay. Now I would like to change the file name to something 
easily accessible because we have to use this file frequently. So I have changing this file name to QE for the simplicity, which we, which can be done using MV command. So MV copy the current folder name and then QE, which we want to change in. Okay. Now QE folder is present. Let's change directory into the QE. Inside the folder, you can see a lot of files. Now, first we need to configure it using dot slash configure. It may take some time. You have to check whether all the libraries are present, which can be done by looking at the portion where it says the following libraries are present. The next step is to make the files. For that, we can type make all. This process also takes some time depending upon your system configuration. So I am skipping into the last part. For me, it takes more than 10 minutes. So now let's cd into the bin directory inside the folder. So let's type cd bin. Here you can see a variety of executables. We are particularly interested in pw.x. Now let's check our current working directory using pwd which means print working directory for my case it is slash home slash user slash qe slash bin now we need to add this into dot bash rc file so that we can access the executables from any location using terminal for that we can use this echo command please do care when typing this command because if we didn't give our path correctly we cannot access these executable from outside this bin folder Now the final step is to source our bash rc. For that we can type source tilta slash dot bash rc. We are done. We can now run pw.x. If you are getting an output like this, everything is fine and we are successfully installed quantum espresso on our system. Now we can download and add the pseudo potentials required for running our simulation. For that, fire up our Firefox again. I will add the links to the pseudo potentials in the description where you can download it. Here I am downloading it from the Materials Cloud. There are two types of pseudo potentials available in Materials Cloud, which is efficiency and precision. I am going with the precision. For that, we can click on the icon pseudos and we will redirect into the downloads page. Press go to downloads. The file will be downloaded on your downloads folder. The next step is to extract the pseudo potential files from the tar.gz using the tar xf command. And I would like to copy these files into a folder called espresso. You can use any file name. Pressing enter and these files will be extracted into a folder called espresso. Seeding into the folder and checking whether the files are present. Yes, everything is uh, extracted into espresso folder. As a last step, we can test our installation using a smart simulation of an SEL using pw.x. For that, I have created a file called nacl.inu which I have given in the description. Uh, you can download and test it. And uh, here you can see two directory names, out directory and pseudo directory, which you have changed in your file. That uh, the pseudo directory must be locating the pseudo directory which you have created earlier. Now let's run it using pw.x. For that, you can type pw.x bar inp, the file name nacl.in and the output name nacl.out.
the simulation is uh, done successfully, then you can see an initial dotout file. You can check what is inside the initial dotout using nano. Inside that file, you can see some calculations are generated. Going into the end of the simulation, you can see job done, which means the simulation was run successfully. Here we get a result of total energy of the NSGL that is as minus 1401.115 red per. 